I love you so long. <laughs> What's good, guys? You boy, we're gonna back again for another raw in Savage Monday Night Raw review. I know they've been missing, then they came back, then they was missing, then they came back. Listen, I have to be honest, man. Big up to the demon team. You know, you know the what we live by. We don't care over here on this channel. We don't give a F. Left. We do our own thing, and that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to have fun. I want to talk about Raw. I'm going to talk about Raw. When I don't want to talk about it, well, you'll know why, because it's trash and I don't want to talk about it, bro. And this was it rubbish today. I mean, kind of, but it's pre-recorded and that, bro. But I, listen, I just thought I might as well throw it out there and that we won't be here for a long time and that. I've got WWE.com up just so I can make sure that I've got it scheduled right so I know which matches are in order. Although, some matches are going to get skipped by because they're pointless. I can't lie. You know, I'm open and honest over here. Obviously, I watched the whole of Raw, but some parts of Raw got spoiled for me. Not major parts. Rhea Ripley returning got spoiled for me. Some random fans. Big up to that fan, by the way, because I know they weren't doing that out of disrespect and that. Because um, obviously, I have different people following me on different platforms. So some people just send me stuff because they think it's cool to send. And I know a lot of channels appreciate that as well. Obviously, you like, no, I'm not really into the rumors and stuff like that, but it's pre recorded. And it was going to get out. That's what happens in it. Because even the journalists keep posting stuff. I'm trying to unfollow them, but I can't. So I knew Rhea Ripley was coming back. Just because hovering over the video the person sent me, I saw her come out in it. But I kind of assumed that it would be her to be the fifth woman anyway. So let's get into this Monday Night Raw. Um, I brought it up. We'll scroll through. And it's a won't start on that match here. But the show did kick off with said build-up with for War Games. Now, obviously, we know that the ladies... They were looking for the five on five war games match, and the baby face team was missing one person. I didn't particularly care for what happened here. There was the face to face. I'm kind of bored of seeing the face to face and the scramble. And I'm and I mean with the men and the women, like I feel like do something different. I didn't mind when it was SmackDown versus Raw because that was just one war games match. Um and it was against two different brands and stuff. So they had like SmackDown on the siege and they would attack each other. That was kind of cool. But this thing where everyone gets face to face and stands there and then fights every week and then goes, War Games, it was a bit terrible. So we had Liv Morgan on the mic for the heels. Kind of said, like, I'm a smart girl and I can do the maths. And from what I count, you guys are one person down. And all the all of the all of the ladies were like doing this weird thing. Now on on the fan made not the fan but yeah on the fan made video because they were in the stadium the person who sent it to me on that video luckily they edited it for raw running because on that video there was this awkward i don't know if they forgot rhea ripley's when her music was meant to hit but on the vi on the fan video the baby face team are standing there for a while doing this like oh we didn't come here alone and then usually if it was stone cold the glass would smash straight away for these lot they were standing there awkward for ages and I don't like it because it kind of makes seem like, uh, yeah, Rhea Ripley's a bigger deal than all of us. But I'm like, but I mean, for that babyface team, they've got, they've got G's on that team. They've got Jade and and Bianca and and Eo on the on that team, bro. Like I don't, so I don't I don't understand why they did that. But obviously, he got into a clash. Rhea Ripley came out with the Undertaker mask. Yeah, I mean, she just came out, stood face to face with Liv Morgan, War Games, dropped the headbutt. And then went on with her business and that, and then we got into the fight there. Yeah, so who cares about that? Moving on from there, we got Rey Mysterio and Zelina Vega defeating Chad Gable and Ivy Nile, or American Alpha, if you will. Um, Listen, man, for me, I've said this many times, we don't need to speak about what Rey Mysterio is because we know the man's a legend and he can do no wrong at this point. Just the fact that he moves around how he does at the age he is, is an athlete, man. Um. And obviously, because he's always masked up, it keeps him seeming young, and it like if you just watch wrestling out of nowhere and didn't know who Rey Mysterio was, you wouldn't know the age of him. So I think he's dope. Chad Gable for me is a top tier performer in the ring. On the mic, he can do a bit better, but I think he's done better over the time. And it's a bit weird because they they put him in the the whole segment with the Wyatt stuff, which I don't want to get into. But then seemingly leaving that and American Alpha getting rid of the Alpha Academy, they've just gone back to losing again. So kind of weird. And LWO is in this weird, I don't know, man. I love the logo of LWO. I love what they stand for and that, but I just, they're, they're boring as hell. It? And I really, because Rey Mysterio at this point doesn't have anything to prove, I would much rather Rey have certain matches every now and again and him 
do some like vignettes of him coaching Zelina Vega and stuff because I feel like Zelina Vega when you give her the mic she's really good in ring she's really good as well she's just tiny but I she feels like somebody you could actually build her up and we saw that when they went to Puerto Rico and the, the starvation she got there obviously we know the reason why but still she was still cold so I think she's got the look and everything like that but they won this match little six one nine and that bro you know how that goes bro and I mean the match didn't mean anything anyway there's, I think that's what's missing. I mean, a lot of stuff in WWE, they're not, they're, there's no meaning, there's no risk, there's no reward to that certain matches. So, next match we had, we had Bron Breaker uh, taking on Sheamus. Now, we saw the build to this last week backstage. I actually like the build. The reason why I liked it is because they dropped in, they dropped in the fact that Sheamus hasn't won the Intercontinental title. Now, Sheamus is my guy. I love Sheamus. He's not, he's doing great work. Nah, not really. But when he has a match, his matches are always cold. But even being a fan of Sheamus, without them telling us Sheamus never won Intercontinental title, on in, in top of my head, I'm like, Sheamus is a Grand Slam champion. I'll just assume he is because he's won everything. Royal Rumbles and every money in the bank, every, everything. But he hasn't won Intercontinental title. So dropping that in there while Bron Breaker is, has got the title and is doing the I'm the young up and coming done and you old geezer need to move out the way. I thought that was pretty good. We got that last week. So leading into this match, okay, we got that. I'm here for it. Um, and we had Ludwig Kaiser come out and stop this match. And he, I, I don't, I can't lie, because I lo- I really like Ludwig. I think Ludwig's probably better than Gunther on the mic. I like the savagery he came out with. You know what I mean? Gunther gave him a speaking to backstage. He came out, done the run around what Bron Breaker normally does and took him out, then done the run around again and took Sheamus out with like a missile drop kick against the stairs. And then stood on the stairs and then the fans were calling him a loser and stuff. And he was taking it all in. And I even saw his backstage segment with Byron Saxton, I think, and that. And it was a great promo. And he basically said, like, I'm fed up of people like Sheamus getting chances and wasting them and not doing anything. And Ludwig Kaiser's time is now. Now, these all these little intricate things are really good for wrestling. The problem is, and I'm not trying to be a person who moans and that, because as I said on one of my other videos, wrestling fans are very forgiven. The problem that you have with it is uh, we have to forget that you keep losing matches yourself. So you're talking about wasted chances, but you always lose. Bro. So it's like, we're going to have to forget that to build you up. But listen, he's a heel, so I don't get think it matters too much. So I'm not too mad at that either. Um, moving on from there, we had War Raiders versus Dirty Dom and Carlito. Listen, I don't give a damn about whatever in it like war raiders won that's what you need to know and then finn and uh and jd came out and beat up the war raiders after beat the hell out of them because obviously they're the number one contenders for the tag team titles nobody nobody cares bro. like i think if you if you give every all wrestling fans a week off tell them to come back and then say you got three seconds to name the wwe tag team champions on both sides you'd fail uh, you'd fail very quick so um, obviously, like I said, you had the Ludwig Kaiser thing backstage. Um, you had, uh, listen, don't even get me started. We had this pure fusion collection. Bro, that, listen, man. PFC or PF Chang or KFC or whatever they're called, or pure fruity collection. That probably sounds a bit homophobic, but I'm not, I don't mean it like that. But you get what I mean, man. Like, listen, let, let, this is very easy to say it now. Shayna and Zoe, or Z- Zoe and Tony Stark. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shayna and Zoe, th- they started to become all right as a tag team. Man. All right. Zoe's best thing she's had in wrestling is when she was with Trish, and she was like Trish's right hand woman. Shayna always should be on her own, but she's not good on the mic, so give her a manager. I don't know why, with the women wrestlers, they don't want to give them a manager, but with the male wrestlers, they can have that. I don't get it. Let, let a male wrestler be the woman's manager or let another woman be. There's plenty of women who have been legends in wrestling or not doing anything that could just do the management side of stuff um, and do be the mouthpiece for one of these. And then Sonya Deville's a weird one because I actually, I, I actually think she's talented. I think she's talented in the ring. I think some of the stuff is a bit cheesy because she comes from that combat sport background. It's kind of hard to fake doing those real stuff when you're used to doing the real stuff. But when I heard her backstage segment, she's actually good on the mic, but this weird thing and the way Tony Stark was talking to Byron Saxton and I, I don't know, man. I don't, I'm not sure about that. Not really that important. Uh, backstage segment between Gunther and Damian Priest. So obviously, 
there was a there was a part I, I probably missed it in um, in the order of it was meant to be, but uh Gunther was speaking to Ludwig. He was basically giving him a pep talk before he went out to the shameless thing. And Kaiser was like, Why did you do that? Why did you I think he was talking about the previous week? And Gunther was like, Because you don't speak for me. He kept speaking to him in German and switching back to English, and he basically said, like, we're guys, and it, but you need to stand on your own two feet, bruv. Like it ain't it's almost like it ain't an Imperium thing like that, bruv. Like we're we're brethrens, we're friends, but you need to stand on your own two feet and go out there and war with what you're meant to go and war with, bro. And it pumped up Ludwig to go out there. This part was a bit annoying because then Ludwig left and Gunther took off his jacket. And I, I kid you not, I kid you not, because the conversation between Ludwig was about what Ludwig was about to go and do and about Damien Priest. I, Damien Priest, when I mean he's like five seconds away from Gunther, he doesn't have headphones in. He's on, he looks like he's at the seamstress table. I don't know if he was signing something. Um, and he's got his back to Gunther. Gunther runs over there. And when I mean he runs over there, I'm talking about. He takes four or five steps and he's just there. So I'm like, so Damien Priest just didn't hear Gunther's voice the whole time, but you got your back to him. Gunther goes over there, puts him in the sleeper hold. Uh, and it doesn't, it backfires on him like instantly. <laughs> Somehow Damien, Damien gets up from the table, kicks him in the balls and that. Gunther falls on the floor like a, you know what I mean? They made him like some chicken shit. And then I think Damien drops some line, which it's not Damien's fault this year, but. It actually might be his fault because I've heard him speak regular. Did you see the Ministry Undertaker voice that he always puts on? You know, hey, all rise for her, champion. Bruv, I can't stand. It doesn't feel real to me, bro. It doesn't feel... I've heard him speak in regular interviews, bro. All rise for her, champion. And then he was like, you might be the general in the ring, but on the streets, I'm the king. Well, I got news flash for you, Damien. You're backstage, bruv. You're not in. You're not on the streets. You're backstage. There's rules and regulations, and there's it's a criminal act. Tech. I would love this if. I would love it if they took a segment outside of the arena somewhere. It doesn't have to be far in a bar or something. It's pre-recorded. You could have took it anywhere. Then have have Damien beat him up. Even have Damien beat him up in a car park is better than having him beaten up backstage. I'm. I know it sounds like I'm moaning, and I probably am. But I'm so done. In, in a in a matter of months, I'm so done with the maid. Somehow made Gunther seem like a chicken shit. He's unaware of him. He's like, he's scared of Damien Priest. He's got no confidence in himself. It takes like two, three words for somebody to say to him. And then he's all like shaken up. This would be, I promise you, there's a way to salvage this very easy. If we get a backstory of Gunther and the why he's like that, it would make complete sense. So, for example, I know it's copying movies, but why not? That's what you do anyway. You see how they treat um, Ivan Drago in the Rocky movies. In fact, Ivan Drago's son, Big Nasty, in the Rocky movies, in the in the Creed movie. And he's like the big guy. He can beat everyone up and that. But then when he meets his mom, you realize that he's a sensitive soul and his dad's been hardening her his whole life. And really, his exterior is like, is, is, is all to fight and stuff, but deep down is a little boy inside and he just wants the adulation of his parents. Do that with Gunther, it's perfect. They've mentioned his family numerous occasions already. Why does he keep calling Damon a street rat and all that stuff? You just have it that back in Germany or Austria, that they look down their noses at people, but it's not because of him, it's because of his dad. Bro, it's so easy, bro. But having him just turn into a pussy all of a sudden when he's been like the baddest man in wrestling for however long, Oh my god, bro. This is the same gun for that. I watched him against Dragon Off and he slapped the he damn near slapped the table in half. It's crazy. It's crazy that they're treating gun for like that, bro. And it's dangerous. And I'm worried for it because don't get me wrong. I think they'll build it up to him beating Damien Priest. But I wouldn't be surprised if if Sammy runs it back at some point. I don't know, man. I don't know, but I when I think about gun for losing this title now, uh, it better be to like I don't know, like John Cena in it. John Cena makes sense for me, that title. Um, or CM Punk or something like that. Or Drew McIntyre, bro. But it, nah, man. Craziness. Uh, we had another backstage segment. Um, th this, was actually this was actually cool. Again, I'm probably repeating what I just said because it's the same for everyone with what I said about like um, Ludwig and stuff like that. You, they're going to need us to forget certain things. Because I feel like they've gone back. 
they've done stuff the wrong way around. They're dropping vignettes after the fact of things that have already happened and people have been brutalized and victimized and made them look weak instead of dropping it the vignettes first and then going into it because the vignettes are there to give us a story, the backstory, some structure to what's going on. Let us know where you're at. So we had this Miz slash Karrion Cross backstage. Oh, man, it was so cool. It was cool, man. And the Miz was dropping lines about um, Carter from Marine and stuff like that. And he said, my performance, like Timothy Chalamet couldn't do that. And I think we should do this for the Marine 7. John Carter's still alive. And yo, who would who would direct it? Scorsese. And they kept going back to that. It was damn near like a rap cypher, to be honest, bro. It was going back to that. I thought it was cool. Um, Karrion dropped his, I'm here to tell the truth. And I do like that about Karrion. If anyone watching my videos, I mentioned this with Drew McIntyre when he came back, spoke to, to CM Punk. That's what I wanted for Drew when I started calling him Truth McIntyre. And his whole mission was just to tell the truth because what he said about CM Punk was the truth. But Karrion doing it's great as well. The problem is, is like the final testament as a whole are rubbish. Not not the individuals. I think Scarlett's incredible. I think that I think AOP as a tag team are dope. I think Karrion's dope. Miz is dope. But as a collective, Make like come on, man. The Miz and Karen, and I don't even know if the Miz is a part of Final Testament to be honest. We did have a VCR videotape, um, from Bo Dallas backstage. I can't lie, this might have been because I was tired, but usually, like, let me know in the comment section. When the videotape started, I thought it was a video of Bray Wyatt, bro. He had the bro, he had the big beard and the hair hanging over his face. If he had a hat on, I would have just thought it was Bray 100%. He started speaking, and then I realized, oh, shit, like, this isn't. This isn't Bray speaking. And I know that Bray's passed away. I meant, like, was it some old video of Bray that we're trying to play? But he kind of sent a message and to The Miz and Karen and let them know, like, we'll give you a chance and stuff like that. And you're going to rule whatever. Listen, you guys know how I feel about the Wyatt Six already, bro. Like, I like I liked the idea in the first place. I was giving it a chance. I like Bo Dallas as a person. I like Bo Dallas as a character. I even like Uncle Howdy. The whole crew, though, I don't think factions are doing very well, to be honest, bro. And it feels like everyone, if if single, if people on their own can't do something, they just throw them in a faction. PFC in a faction, damage control faction. When um, Street Profits and Bobby weren't doing anything, faction. Harry and Cross and these man faction, Alpha Academy faction. Like it's just faction after faction. After having, after going for a period with not enough factions, we're just getting. Fa I remember when we just had like Retribution, just those mate, this Mason T Bar and Flapjack. Remember that. I remember when that's what we had to moan about. And then we got like the Hurt Business, which was a great faction. Listen, man, I don't know about that, but it is what it is. And then obviously we got the coup de grace of the uh, the episode, which was Seth Rollins versus Bronson Reed in a one-on-one -on -one again. Flipping hell, man. Like, I, I'm, I don't care about the match. I'll be honest. I don't care about the match. Just let me just get that out there straight away. I don't care about the match. Because there was just too much false finishes. It didn't make Brunson Reed look strong because there's so many false finishes. They're doing better, they're doing a better job with Brunson Reed. The fact that he's even mixing with certain people, I think that's great. But yeah, for me, don't care about the match. And obviously, as the match started and then the bloodline jump out the crowd in it and surround the ring, then the Usos music go off and they come out with Sammy and then the Usos and and well, the bloodline versus bloodline, they go toe to toe with each other. No Roman and no Solo at the time. Uh, the baby faces get the upper hand. Couple super kicks to Jacob Fatu take him out. Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa got taken out too. Um, the match continued. Seth took a, <laughs> somehow went ahead in this match. Got in with the curb stomp. Went up to do the frog splash. And then Solo stood on the table and started screaming. And somehow, as a grown man, somehow that dist that was enough to distract Seth. And I'm talking about Solo didn't grab his leg. He didn't throw a steel chair in the ring. He didn't stand up on the apron. He stood on the, on the announce table and it distracted him. Enough time for Brunson Reed to just get up from the, from the curb stomp, which clearly didn't bother him. Um, I think he gave him a Samoan drop and then he gave him like two running sentons, ran back to the top of the rope. Tsunami! Frog smash. And I forgot to mention, backstage prior to this match, they did approach Seth again to join War Games and he kind of said, like, yo, Jay, if it was you, I would join. If it was Sammy, I would join. If it's Jimmy, I'd join. But I would never join that tyrant, Roman Reigns. And guess what's going to happen? He's going to join Roman Reigns in that War Games match. And don't get me started on 
Seth Rollins and the cheek he has for Roman Reigns because bro, apart from holding the title hostage by winning, he really didn't have much interaction the whole time with Seth apart from when they had that match. I don't know if it was Royal Rumble or something like that when Seth came out in the shield gear. They didn't have much interaction. Roman beat him. Well, actually, Seth won that match by disqualification. And then the next time we saw them with each other was at WrestleMania, which, again, was on stage at the WrestleMania um, Access show before the WrestleMania XL. And then, obviously, The Rock came out. And Roman didn't really have a problem with Seth on stage. I mean, he dissed him and said that you wear in your wife's shoes, but there wasn't anything major. I don't understand why Seth's the one with the problem. You're the one who turned on the shield, bro. You're the one who put the steel chair in Roman's back. In fact, you're the architect of Roman Reigns. You're the reason why Roman's like this. So I'm not trying to hear all of that from Seth. Being no damn sympathy. Crazy. Anyway, that's how Raw ended. And yeah, we know. We know what's going to happen at War Games, isn't it? It is what it is. Does it feel rushed? Yes. Do I like Brunson Reed with the bloodline? I kind of do like Brunson Reed with the bloodline. I know it's not going to last for long. I wish th if this was earlier, they could have just got him as part of the bloodline because he makes them look way more dangerous. Way more dangerous. Um, and Seth is Superman. He can just, you know what I mean, stand towards toe, but Brunson Reed got the win. So I think that's a beautiful thing. But we'll see what happens next week. I think there's a lot of pre-record show. They, they pre-recorded this so they could have... I don't know, man. I feel like they pre-recorded the wrong one, but I think they pre-recorded some after for Christmas and that. Listen, I'm all for these guys having time off. I think they're the most used athletes in the world and I feel like their bodies need time to recover. So the only problem I have, and I guess for the people in the attendance, um, watching the pre-recorded shows because they do back-to-back -back shows. That must be weird for those people because the storylines when it comes to backstage segments, they don't need to be done in front of the crowd so they can just get dripped in. Whereas the matches, you're going to see like two and a half hours or well, two hours of matches and then a small interval and then two hours of matches for the, with some of the same people, which won't make sense. I'd hate to be in the stadium for that. But I think you pay one ticket price, which I guess is what it is there. Um, but for me, I'm just like, if it's pre-recorded, then just by the way of that, pre-recorded show should be better than a live show. Apart from the noise of the crowd, which they're piping in anyway, and it's, it's actually terrible because the pipe noise that they use is looped on it, so you can hear the same... Don't loop the... Don't loop... If you want to pipe noise in, do not show us shots of the crowd because we can see that they're on their phone and not booing anyone, so it's silly. Um, And we already know that to get the piped in noises, they tell you to... to make the noise and stuff when you go to the state. Everyone knows that. So um, it was all right in the Thunderdome, but this is real life. But for me, pre-recorded shows should be way better because there should be no mistakes because you can cut them out. I think uh, Tessa Torre, man was doing voiceover, but I seen a shot of him at the, the um, announce table and he weren't talking, but I could hear him talking. Man doing some bank ventriloquist thing. So um, yeah, for me, I feel like the pre-recorded shows should be better because you have the, like like I just said, with the Gunther thing and Damien Priest being that so close, they could have slowed that down. They could have cut to a break or something like that so it didn't seem like some weird... It looked like, basically, if you was on a West End stage, that's what you would do on a West End stage because there's only the stage and no space. You could have backstage segments. You could have brawls at a bar and the car park. You could have had so much different things, but they didn't. So WWE, I'll be honest, I love WWE as a whole. They do let me down sometimes. They're a bit disappointing, but that's what happens if a show's been running for damn near 30 plus years or whatever, how many years and that. When did Raw start? Like 95, something like that. Anyway, yeah, if it's been running for that long, then you're going to have some bad episodes in it. So I'm not crazy at that. I so if you if you have a, a TV, a TV program that's been running for 20 years and that, you, you know, there's some soap operas in England that I watch that I love them, but some of the storylines are trash. That's not a problem to me. The problem I have is when I can tell that people are being lazy creatively and they're being lazy because they know Netflix is coming up and why would we say, why would we use any of the good stuff now when we got Netflix? Well, I'll tell you why. Because you'll get people in now. People will start seeing a storyline building and go, yo, I want to watch that storyline. How come when I turned it on USA Network, it weren't on? Oh, it's on Netflix now. Oh, I've got Netflix already. Then they go watch it. If you think you can just go to Netflix, promote it, and then all of a sudden... People who don't watch wrestling are going to be like, wrestling's on Netflix, let me go watch. It's live, bro. Is that weird time for people across the planet? I don't know, man. Anyway, let me know you think in the comments section. Be a boy, excited to come, like, subscribe, and share. I love you, Solo!